Hi, this is Props, a series of plays inspired by people who support others. I'm Catherine. I waited two and a half years for my partner to be released from prison. This play isn't my story, but it's a drama about a life on hold. Footprints by Bisola Alabi. Look at that. Right on cue, the annoying buzzing of that prison door. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Then the hard tapping of worn down black boots thunder past my cell door, followed by an out of tune whistle with the heavy panting of a man who eats way too many Krispy Kremes. Who needs an alarm clock to kick you out of sleep when you have Gareth? <sighs> Time to get up. Brush my teeth, stare in the mirror, hard, look over at Stacy. <laughs> Still dead to the world. Ali, can you believe it? Where has the time gone? It has taken us three years to get here. Three years of documents, lawyers, money, more money. Should I go on? All that just to get to this point. And yet, still more waiting. At least it's only several weeks away now. Should we tell the kids? No, no. I'm getting ahead of myself. I just wish they'd tell us. Instead of keeping us stuck in limbo. Waiting. Soon we'll see if it was all worth it. What do you mean? I am being positive. Okay, okay, Mum, I need to go. You know I haven't fully told him yet. He kind of has an idea, but I'll tell him when he's back from tour. Just waiting for the right moment, that's all. It's not a big deal. Why are you making such a fuss about it? Listen, I have to get the boys off to school. Boys, hurry up! We're already running late. He's back in a few weeks. OK, I'm going for real now. Yes, we'll talk later. Yes, it's 6 a.m. Yes, I'm making full of damas because, because why not? We haven't eaten it in months and I'm tired of this unseasoned English food. I don't care what Jamie Oliver says. Bushra and Hashim have probably forgotten what full damas is, let alone what it tastes like. They barely speak Arabic now. They're starting to even look and sound more English. Are we even Syrian anymore? No, I'm not being negative. I'm in a good mood, Miss Shafe. You haven't noticed that I put on your favorite song just for you. We're celebrating. You're looking at the new member of Show Sex Security. Nishkur <laughs> Allah. A long way from being a lecturer in Damascus, but it's a start. Guess what? I can get us discounts to some shows, maybe even tickets to see some of your favorites. They're just finalizing some things, but it's all official. I'll take their word for it. Very enthusiastic. <laughs> the home office will have to approve my status now. I know there isn't a guarantee, but now look who's being negative. Our lives and the future of our children depends on it. Imagine our whole lives dwindle down to a dozen page application and the mood of a stranger. <laughs> anyway, let's just focus on this good news at least. Come on, Michael, stop dragging your feet. You still haven't cleaned out and organized your wardrobe. Five days until your dad gets here. Five days. Don't get too comfortable over there, Oliver. Your room's a mess too. 
don't think for one second I don't know you've been stuffing your dirty clothes in the back cupboard. I'm even surprised you went in there. Didn't you say it was haunted? Ooh. Uh, don't give me that look. No one told you to watch Pet Cemetery. You only have yourself to blame. I saw that, Michael. Don't roll your eyes. We go through this every single time and I have to tell you to do the simplest of tasks. No, Ollie, the word you're looking for is pedantic. And I'm not being fussy, thank you very much. You know what he's like before he even sits down for his first cuppa. He'll use his military microscopic vision to inspect your rooms. I'm telling you, it's a superpower. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or not. So if I were you, I'd hop to it, not crawl or walk or even skip. Just do it. My stomach's in knots. How's my hair looking, Stace? I was going to buy some hair dye, but I didn't want to risk it on that cheap stuff from the kiosk. Extortion, that is. 20 quid for hair dye that you'd get for a quid at Poundland. What a cruel joke. I look fine. Do you call greys, dark circles and crow's feet fine? She's going to look at me like some geriatric misfit. Imagine, she might not recognise me. If that happens, I'll run my backside back in here. I swear I will. Took this when we went to Margate. I remember it like yesterday. Viv was flinging seaweed at Benji. She always teased him. Well, they teased each other, but she usually won. Oh, they were so little here. Viv's coming to pick me up. I wish they'd both come, but beggars can't be choosers. Don't give me that look, all right. I just wish I enjoyed them a little bit more at that age, you know? I took it all for granted. God, look at me moaning on and on like a broken record. You're right. This is a new chapter. In less than four hours, I get to see that beautiful smile and slightly crooked tooth of hers. I hope she smiles. Why would she be smiling? God, I'm so stupid. I'm acting like my daughter is about to pick me up from Tenerife. You know I like to overthink. Like you said, it's one of my best traits. It kept you entertained. <laughs> Yes, I know I have to enjoy the moment, but I've been here for what feels like a lifetime and they've been so strong, stronger than me, dealing with the world, judging them for their mum's stupid mistake. Love makes you stupid, I guess. Anyway, let's not go down that road. I can't mess up this time, Stace, I can't. No, 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 this could ruin everything. I knew it was too good to be true. They gave me their word that I had the job, and now this? One week before my status is approved, and they're telling me things could change? This could set us back, and now I have to wait another week. I'm going to have to notify the Home Office. Uh, well, I have no choice. <laughs> Waiting could risk my status. If they wanted to, they could throw me into a detention center on the spot. They could. They're wicked like that. In fact, they probably already know and are waiting to see if I'll tell them. It's just more limbo. Giving us hope, and then snatching it away. I don't know for how long I can do this, Ali. You've settled in the hotel? Oh, really? You'll still be home on time. Let's not jinx it. So you're not going to say you miss me? Oh, you don't want to say you miss your wife in front of your army, mate. I'm not teasing. I'm sure their partners are saying the same thing as me. No different when you left. Still giving me the runaround. Apparently you're the fun one. And of course you'd say that. You got what? Oh, I hope it's not a box of hard taffy. You know damn well I hated those awful sweets. I literally felt the molars eroding from all that chewing. Listen, James, I... Oh, don't do that. It's nothing bad. Well, you know, I mentioned that I've been looking at some courses and I was thinking, yes, I did mention it. Because, you know, I want to get back to my career and... What is it? You wait till now to say this. I can't believe you're springing this on me. What do you want me to say? I've been supporting you living your dreams for the last how many years, like a good cheerleader. I just... I just wish at one time you'd do the same for me. 
Don't give me that I know what I signed up for. But I guess it doesn't matter now, does it? She'll be here soon. God, look at my hands, shaking. Keep it together, Gwen. You'd think I was meeting Cher or Dolly Parton, not my own daughter. <laughs> She's a star in her own right. She's all grown up, doesn't need her mum anymore. Managed to find her own way in this world all by herself. They both did. Though Benji took it harder. Did I tell you she works for the Prince's Trust? <laughs> Clever girl. I just wonder what she's going to think of me, you know. Yes, we spoke on the phone, but this is different. I'm going back out there. And it's all different, isn't it? OK, something good. Well, uh, she knows about my business course here, and we've had some chats about that. She may even have some contacts for me, so hopefully I'll be of some use. She did say she was proud. If I can survive in here, I know I'm good for it out there. Bloody hell, I'm going to miss you, Stace. Maybe not your snoring, though. <laughs> You're the only one who's kept me going. For my own selfish reasons, I wish I could take you out with me. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> you still hate my morning kisses, Hashem? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm shocked you haven't got used to them by now. Even Bosra waits until I leave the room before she wipes it off her forehead. <laughs> ah, you think I didn't know? Hmm. Let me tell you a little secret. As your father, I know everything. <laughs> do you know? Do you know why I do this? It's because every morning. I'm thankful that I wake up and get to see your mischievous faces. <laughs> no matter what happens in life, I will always be grateful to Allah for you. Even in our most saddest or most unpredictable times, Allah only gives us what we can handle. One day, you both will be all grown up, and I hope my words will stay with you. And you too will kiss your children. <laughs> huh? These letters? Well, it's one of those unpredictable moments. Not bad, but confusing. You see, I finally got good news that I secured a new job. N no, not the security one. Uh, this is a factory cleaning job, but I'll still try to take you to see uh, Jojo Seal. Oh, Jojo Siwa. <laughs> My apologies. But before that, I have to write back to the government again and ask permission to work my new job. The silly thing is, is that I have to wait a few months before I can write back. So here I am with this new job offer, but I'm not allowed to work that job yet. Well, the government said I forgot one item in my application, but I know I added it, but they say I must add it again. If I don't get permission, well, that means I'd have to leave. No, you both are safe. Mama and I made sure of that. Yes, it feels that way, Habibi, but at least I am here with you. And like I said, Allah only gives us what we can handle. You two are my reminders that all will be well. I know it will be. Now come on, you have to get ready for school. Time to rise and shine, as they say. <laughs> Yal. Dad's running a bit behind. He has something to tell you when he arrives. I can't, you'll have to wait. He'll be the one to tell you. It's the least he can do. 
It's definitely going to change things a bit. Don't worry, nothing too crazy. No, I'm not upset. In life, we compromise, and that's not a bad thing. It just means I want your dad to be happy, that's all. Oh, you, you saw those. Well, I'm putting those courses on hold for a little bit longer. We just have to support your dad first. It'll make him really happy if we support him. But I'll let him tell you his good news. Speak of the devil. Don't run! Yes, James. Tell them all about your big promotion. Thanks, Mel, for always taking it easy on me. Can't say I'll miss you, though. Yeah, I hope not to be back either. You know what? I know I won't be back. My God, there she is. Smiling that beautiful, crooked tooth smile of hers. Viv! Mm. <laughs> Look at you, your height, your hair. No, I love it. Me too, darling. I've missed you so, so much. You have no idea. They couldn't wait to get rid of me. I was driving them mental, never shutting up about you and your brother. <laughs> so proud of you. Though I wish Benji was here and all. Vivian, you know how I feel about surprises. It's Benji's idea. Well, OK, I'll take your word on that. Indeed. This is a new beginning. Footprints by Basola Alabi was performed by Sharice Blackman, Chloe Massey and Walid Hamad. The prop series is directed by Sarah Meadows and produced by Naomi Turner from an idea by Lucy Bell. It's edited by Jack Drury with music by Ben Quasi Burrell. Audio production by Ant Hickman and Katie Wood. Props is a documental theatre production supported by the Audio Content Fund.